In this video, we're going to derive the formula for the average value of a continuous function. We're going to look at a particular example to help uh, motivate it, but I really want to focus on the derivation of the formula. So to do that, let's look at this example. A remote control toy car travels at a speed of v of t equals negative t squared plus 6t feet per second for t from 0 to 6. Find the average speed of the car from t equals 0 to t equals 6. So here's a graph over here um, with our seconds on our horizontal axis and feet per second on the vertical axis. And so the car is starting from a speed of 0 and speeding up and reaching its maximum speed which is 9 feet per second at 3 seconds and then it slows down and comes to a stop after 6 seconds. Now I thought about going from t equals 0 to t equals 5 and maybe it smashes into the wall. So, but, you know, let's, let's just say it comes to a nice, nice, slow, relaxed stop after 6 seconds to 0. So when we think about average, we have a lot of practice finding the average if we're just looking at a, a finite set of points, right? How do we find the average? We just add up all the numbers and divide by however many numbers we're adding up. But in this case, the speed is constantly changing. The speed is every single speed between 0 and 9. At some time, the speed was 6.1. At some time, the speed was 6.2. At some time, the speed was 6.00025876. So how do we average these speeds? How do we add up all these numbers and divide by the number? of speeds. Well, we can't do that because there's an infinite number of speeds. I should say we can't do that in the traditional way. But let's start off with the traditional way. One way we might approximate the average speed is just to take a snapshot of the speed at certain times. Now if you've done any calculus, which you since you're watching this, I'm sure you have, um, you have this idea of taking an interval from 0 to 6 and splitting it into smaller intervals called partitioning. So in this picture I've partitioned the interval 0, 6 into 6 intervals 0 to 1 second, 1 to 2, etc. And what I could do is I could pick some point in that interval. I went and picked the midpoints. So basically at 0.5 seconds the car was traveling 2.75 miles per hour. At 1.5 seconds, the car was traveling at 6.75, did I say miles per hour, sorry, feet per second, um, etc. 8.75 feet per second, and I've got these six data points. So one way to approximate the speed would be to add up those six speeds and divide by six using my partition. And I get approximately 6.83 bar miles per hour. All right, that's pretty good. That might be a pretty good estimate of the average speed. Well, how could we get a better estimate of the average speed? You're probably thinking more intervals. Great idea. So let's say I split this into 15 intervals and I wanted to find the uh, speed. I'm using the midpoints again here of each interval. So what I would want to do to find or approximate the average speed is plug in uh, 0.2 into the function, which would give me the speed at 0.2 seconds, and then 0.6, etc. right? All these values, I'd have to find all these values, add them all up, and divide by 15, because that's my number of intervals. And I went ahead and did that, and we got 6.01. 333 three, three miles per hour. So remember when we had six intervals, we had 6.08, 6.01. We could make a pretty good guess here that the average speed is going to be around six miles per hour. So now we want to get into the formula. How do we generalize this? I think you guys can kind of see where we're going here, right? We want to let the number of intervals approach infinity. So let's let x sub i star be any point in the interval x sub i sub 1 comma x sub i. So if you've had some experience with this, which you, I'm sure you have, um, we're taking this point, which is our a value, and this point over here, which is our b value, and we're going to split it into however many intervals we want. So we'll have some interval here, and this will be, so the next, this a would be x sub 0, and then the next um, end point here would be x sub 1, and we just keep splitting it up, and then we've got some generic interval in here. And we pick some point in there, x sub i star, 
and we're going to use that as the value of um, our function. We're going to plug that into our function. So here I was just using the midpoints, but now I'm saying, hey, we could pick any point we want. So the average speed or the average value of a function, which we actually denote like this, f bar, all right, the average of value of the function over this interval is going to be approximately, actually let's change this to approximately first. We're going to add up all of my values of the function. Oops, that should be a 1. Let's go back here. Back, 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 back. My first interval, I'm going to take the x value of my first interval that I'm picking, the x value of the second interval, I'm going to plug those into my function. Those are my y values, my outputs. In my example, they're my speeds. And I'm going to continue this all the way to x sub n minus 1 star plus f of x sub n star. Those are all my outputs, all my speeds in the example I was using. I'm going to add those all up, and then I'm going to divide by n, right? the number of intervals. I'm averaging them. So the exact value of the function, the exact value, is going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of this sum. All right, so let's write this sum as a summation. So the sum from k equals 1 to n of f of x sub k star. And then that whole thing divided by n. Okay, so here we're adding up all of our y values, all of our speeds in the example I gave. All right, well, let's remember what n is. n is the number of intervals over here, right? So hopefully you've done some work with something called delta x. And delta x is the width of this interval. So we're talking about a regular partition. We're letting all these intervals have the same... Um, value the same distance, all right? So the distance from x sub 1 to x sub 2 is the same as the distance from x sub 1 or x sub 2 to x sub 3, etc. And the way we would find uh, the length of delta x or the value of delta x would be to take b minus a, which is the length of the whole entire interval, and divide that by the number of rectangles that we're using or the number of intervals in our partition. All right, so I'm going to use this little relationship here, and I'm going to substitute in for this n. Okay, so I'm going to solve this for n. So if I multiply both sides by n, I get this. Great. And then I'm going to divide both sides by delta x. So n is b minus a over delta x. All right, so I'm going to go over here for my average value, and I'm going to say, all right, so I could find the average, the exact average value by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of all this good summation stuff. x sub k star uh, divided by n, which I'm going to put in b minus a over delta x. Now I've got a complex fraction here. I have a fraction in a fraction. So this is going to, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Okay, so that's going to go up there. So I'm going to have delta x over b minus a times this whole limit. Now, what I want to do is rewrite this a little bit because this is starting to look like the definition of a definite integral. All right, This is starting to look like the definition of a definite integral. The thing with the definite integral, though, is it has the delta x, right? The delta x is at the end of this limit. Well, de delta x is some constant based on b and a and n. And so I can take this delta x and I can move it to the end over here, move it, put it to the end of my limit, and say the average value is 1 over b minus a times the limit as n approaches infinity of my summation and then the delta x here. And this is the exact definition of the definite integral from a to b. All right, so that is exactly equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx.
All right, and that is the formula for finding the average value of a function. All right, so let's go back and look what we did. All we did was we said, hey, let's let's plug in, uh, let's partition this interval. All right, let's pick some point in each interval. We're going to plug it into our function. That gives us a whole bunch of y values that we're going to average. So we would divide by however many y values we're picking, and that's n. Now we let that limit go to infinity. We're going to get the exact value of the average. And then we need to divide that by n. Hey, remember n is delta x equals b minus a over n. So we can substitute this business in for n, rewrite it, oopsie, rewrite it a little bit, and we come up with this formula. We come up with the definition of a definite integral. Now, if you don't remember the definition of a definite integral, you might want to look it up, but you know, with the stipulations that our function's continuous and all that good stuff, this is the definition. And it talks about the partition and how we got all this in the definition, but that's that's the definition of a definite integral. All right, so let's use our cool definition to actually find the exact value of the average. Let's go back. Remember, we had um, with six rectangles or six intervals, we had 6.08. Then we went to 15. We had 6.01. All right, let's use our newfound cool tool here. We know that the exact average value is 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b. In this case, it's going to be actually, let's do this. I'll just write it this way. For us, it's v, but I started with f, so we'll just finish it like this. f of x dx. So ours is going to be the exact average value of the speed a to b of v of t dt, which is 1 over b minus a is 6, because it's just 6 minus 0, from 0 to 6, negative t squared plus 6t dt. All right, so we're just going to use our power rule for integrals here, and we get negative 1 third t to the third plus 6 divided by 2 is 3t squared, and we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 6. Let's see if we have enough room here. All right, so we get 1 sixth, and we're going to plug 6 into here. And let's see, 6 cubed times 1 third, I think I wrote that down, that was negative 72. Okay plus, and then we'll put 6 in here, so 3 times 6 squared, that's 108, 3 times 36, 108, minus, then we'll put the lower bound in, 0 plugged in for both of these is going to be 0. All right, so that gives us 1 sixth times uh, 108 take away 72 is 36, which is 6, 6 miles, not miles, feet, Per second is our average speed, 6 feet per second. All right, so the main focus of this video was to derive the formula, to show you where the formula comes from. You know, there's plenty of videos out there that show examples like this of just plug and chug. But I wanted you to understand um, basically what we're doing here is adding up more and more and more y values, more and more y values, let those y values go to infinity, boom, we have our definite integral, and then it becomes a plug and chug situation once you have that formula. But hopefully that'll help you understand the formula, remember the formula, and um, find out the average speed of a continuous function over any interval.